Yo, what's poppin' in this video? I'm gonna show you how I overcame my shyness and how you can too. Don't you hate when you're in a group of people and somebody says to you, hmm, why are you so quiet? What, what are you, why are you silent? Why, why aren't you saying much? It's like, what, what kind of answer do they expect? Oh, you know, well, my childhood caused me to have an irrational fear of social interactions and everybody else around me, especially strangers like you. I'm happy to make this video because I battle with shyness still in a weird way, though. Because in some situations, I'm the loudest person in the room. <laughs> Yes, attention on me. Look at me, everybody. <laughs> and then other times I'm just silent. Wow, that is quite pleasant. Perhaps. Perhaps. Being shy can be so overwhelming. It's like you've got a million voices in your head at the same time. They're judging every single action you want to take, every single word you want to say. You feel like you're trapped inside your own head and that everyone around you is judging you. It sucks. So here's some tips that I've found incredibly useful for overcoming shyness. The fourth tip is personally my favorite, but keep watching through the whole video. Number one, the first thing to do is to embrace yourself. Because look, give yourself a break, right? I know sometimes when, when, when you're feeling really shy and all these voices are attacking you, you start to feel bad about yourself. Pause for a second and accept who you are. Not every Every day has got to be a home run. Not every day is going to be just knock it out of the park. And to add on to that, keep in mind that being shy is not necessarily a bad thing. I know at least for me, when I think, oh, I'm being kind of shy right now, that it's like it has this negative connotation when really it's not. It's not that bad to be a quieter person. In fact, if anything, you're probably a better listener. So if you have that thought in your head, get it out of your head that being less talkative makes you less of a person. It sounds even ridiculous to, for me to say, but I know that at least for me, I've had those thoughts in my head like, oh, I'm, I'm quiet. so. I'm not, I'm not as good of a person as all these other people screaming all day. <laughs> now that I think about it, one thing that I, I've tried to do and I found it pretty helpful is that if somebody asks you, why are you so quiet? You can accept that, you know, look, not every day has got to be a home run. You can be chill. You can be quiet for a day or a period of time. You can look at them. You could just say, ah, oh, you know, it's just been a long day. I'm just kind of tired. Ah, I'm just kind of out of it, you know, feeling pretty tired. Every time I've said that, people have just been like, Ch I'm so tired too. Life is just so hard. Now that first tip was more psychological. Let's move on to number two. That is when you're in a group setting and you're feeling overwhelmed with everyone talking around you, you don't really know how to interject. Find that one person in the group that doesn't intimidate you and start a little small talk with them on the side. It's starting small because it's significantly easier than trying to engage the entire group at the same time. And what's great about this is that especially if you pick someone who's well liked by the rest of the group, it gives you another way to ensure that you're welcomed by the whole group. Because of the most liked person in the group likes you and is seen talking with you. People are going to assume that you're a great person too. And this works for new situations, new group situations, or current ones where you know everybody already. You can just lean over and just speak to the person next to you or someone you're comfortable with and make small talk, break the ice a little bit and get your feet wet. Now number three is another conversational tip I found when you're with a group of people or a couple people or just one person. That is to add value without having to say much. You know, if you think about it, it's better to just add value instead of just being a blabber, like just running your mouth, running your motor. So first, remove the obligation of having to be the most talkative person there. Take that out of your mind, throw it away. And try to add value in smaller ways, smaller and more impactful ways. For example, you could turn to someone next to you, say something small like, hey, uh, your outfit's really cool, I like it. Boom, value offered, bam. That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the person is a complete weirdo, people love compliments. And they'll turn to you and be thankful. They'll be appreciative that you gave them such a nice, genuine compliment. And the cool thing is you just open up the door to a little conversation because they already like you. You made them feel good. And when they reflect those positive vibes back to you off that compliment, it's going to boost your confidence. And you can just go around adding value in small ways. All right, number four. This is probably my favorite point. Now, to overcome shyness, right, you need to get out of your head. This is all in your head. So if you can, try to first exit the situation. Give yourself a mental break. Like for me personally, if I'm at work, for example, I will get up and just go take a walk. I'll go to another floor, or I might even go to the lobby. I might even go outside, take a really quick walk. I don't want to be gone too long. But I just try to just take a walk, clear my head a little bit, get some air, walk around. And if you're even feeling a little overwhelmed, take some deep breaths, and like I said, accept yourself. And chances are, if you're overly shy and you had all those voices coming at you in your head, you probably were having a lot of negative self-talk. Oh, you're stupid. Why aren't you saying anything? Oh, everyone just thinks you're really quiet. Probably think you're really lame. So take some deep breaths, slow down, and start accepting yourself. And I think one of the best ways 
to go about doing that is to use some affirmations. I mean, I'm big on affirmations. I've used them for like the last few years. Have a list of affirmations, a list of dope things about yourself that you can consistently remind yourself of. It's easy to forget sometimes. You can walk around really briefly. You don't even need to say it out loud because it depends on the situation. You might not <laughs> have the freedom to just be proclaiming your affirmations to the world. You can say it under your breath. Take deep breaths, you take a walk. After you do that, this is my favorite part. Do something grand, like physically, ideally something goofy. For example, for some backstory, if me and my friends, my other guy friends, were at a club or a party, and you know, we wanna talk to some girls. We see some beautiful women and we wanna go talk to them, but for some reason we're, we're feeling hesitant, we're feeling a little shy. One thing we like to do is we'll exit the situation, maybe go outside or something, and do something silly. Like for example, walking around like a crab or some kind of animal in the street, like in the sidewalk. And you're doing it with your friends, so it's easier to do. <laughs> but, you, but you walk around doing it, having fun, looking stupid, and you're making everyone around you laugh. And it looks ridiculous. You're doing something ridiculous. And what this does is it gets you out of your head. Because what you're doing is so ridiculous that to go back and have a little conversation or to just approach a woman in this example I gave, in comparison is like night and day. I was just out there walking around like a crab with my friends, making everyone laugh, doing the stupidest stuff. I'm about to go just say hi to this girl, fine. No problem. And I actually got this from Real Social Dynamics on YouTube and all over social media, so shout out to y'all. I understand there's gonna be some situations where you can't just do that, especially you may not even be with friends, you may be by yourself. So for example, let's say you're at work, you can start and do something small. So you can swing your arms around, you can swing your arms around, do something physical, you know? Get yourself out of your head. Or you can do what my personal favorite is, you can go to the bathroom, go into the stall, lock it, no one can see you, do something ridiculous. You can dance, you can do something silly in a dumb way. No one's gonna see you, no one knows what's going on. All right, number five, exude confident body language. When you exude confident body language, you're actually sending signals to your brain that's telling you you're being confident. It's like fake it till you make it. And what that can do is in turn, it'll just make you feel more confident in yourself. Because if you're shy, right, and you're really in your head, you might have really negative uh, body language you might be you know you might be crossing your arms you might be turned away from people your head might you might be looking down and what i'm gonna do is i'm going to actually try and find my favorite body language video and link it in the, in the description box so you see more examples but I mean, positive body language is everywhere like if you're sitting in your desk you just put your arms up like this briefly you can lean back when you're standing you can put your hands i don't know if you can see me put your hands on your on your, your, your waist, and it's gonna make you feel more confident. In the comment section down below, let me know which of these tips are your favorite. Yo, welcome to the end of the video. What's good? What's poppin'? Click over here for more. I've got more amazing stuff for you, and it's all free. Just click over here. But look, I used to hate Mondays. Mondays used to mess me up. I hated Mondays so much, I said I need to make a change of some sort, and it wasn't until I utilized the tips I'm about to tell you right now. I started loving 